Hello, I'm Paul Cowling with Film Independent and welcome to this week's Coffee Talk. Uh, for those who don't know us, Film Independent is the non-profit arts organization. Our mission is to champion creative independence and visual storytelling and support the community of artists who embody diversity, innovation and uniqueness of vision. Uh, we're probably best known for producing the Film Independent Spirit Awards taking place on the beach in Santa Monica, but we also offer a year-round programming of screenings, conferences, conversations, filmmaker labs, and mentorship programs. So you can find out more at filmindependent.org, and membership is open to all. Uh, we missed, we took last week off, and so this week we're doubling up the fun. We thought we'd do a pairing of pairings, uh, filmmaker teams. So I'm uh, really thrilled to have four great filmmakers with us today. First up, they are the filmmaking team who took a long time to make movies because they were busy making kick-ass music videos uh, for bands such as Smashing Pumpkins, R.E.M., Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, and when they did make their first movie, it was the Spirit Award Oscar-winning Little Miss Sunshine, uh, which was a huge, one of the huge indie hits of this year. They followed that up with Ruby Sparks, The Battle of the Texas, and most recently, they have directed all eight episodes of Living With Yourself, starring Paul Rudd, which you can find on Netflix. So, Jonathan Dayton and Valerie Farris, welcome. Uh, Here they are. Hi there. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Good. You are in Venice, I assume, right? Yes. Yes. Home in Venice. How's the lockdown treating you? <laughs> Well, uh, today is, it's really good. Uh, <laughs> one day at a time. You know, but... it be, with, you know, we have three children and parents uh, spread all over the country. And so it's, it's never just about what your lot is. It's always kind of a juggling of everybody. A, a daily checking in with everyone. But yeah. um, we're good. Good. And also joining us is the filmmaking team behind uh, indie hits such as Half Nelson, Sugar, Mississippi Grind. Uh, last year, they joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe and uh, directed Captain Marvel. Uh, their TV credits include episodes of The Affair, Billions, and four episodes of Mrs. America, currently playing on Hulu. Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck are both with us. Welcome. Hey, Ryan, and here's Anna. Hello. You, I assume, are not in separate rooms in the same place. You are in separate cities, right? Or where are you, Ryan? That's right. Yeah, I'm in, um, I guess I'm in Hollywood. Okay. And Anna, you're joining us from the East Coast? Yes, um, in the Hudson Valley right now, uh, but normally in Brooklyn. Okay. And how's the pandemic treating you both? I'm good. I'm pre I mean, it's pretty boring for me. I think Anna has a much more exciting story of her pandemic experience. Okay. You want to save that for the conversation with John and Val? <laughs> well, anyway, uh, the way this works is I'm going to step off this virtual stage for about 30 minutes and let the four of you chat and talk shop, um, all things directing and filmmaking. I will come back to um, field some questions from our audience. If you are listening in and want to submit a question, use the question button at the bottom of the screen. And we'll try to get to as many of those as possible. But uh, for now, it's over to the four of you. Take it away. All right. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, so Anna, with that setup, you have to explain guess, yeah. your, your exciting uh, COVID. I mean, I don't know how. <laughs> know how exciting the pandemic's been for me. I mean, it, it, I feel like for everybody, it's kind of um, just been like an intense stew of feelings. But I did, it started out very personally intense for me because I was, um, my stuff was halfway between Los Angeles and New York on March 11th when I flew to New York and, you know, I was making this cross country move at nine months pregnant with a five year old. And, um, and it was like a week before lockdown in New York city. And uh, so moving into a new place and trying to figure out how to give birth during a pandemic, it was um, this real kind of 
very focused internal adrenaline journey towards um, finally giving birth on April 5th. And, um, you know, I always think back to that time and like the amount of time between March 11th and April 5th felt like a millennium. And then it's just whipped by since then. As soon as I got to the other side, I feel like then I kind of sunk into what everybody else had been experiencing and, um, you know, like woke up a bit <laughs> and just, um, but grateful to be on the other side of that uh, and now living through it like everyone else. How about you guys? Well, it is funny you talk about that. The first few weeks, I would say, of the of the lockdown, I felt like every day just was... Uh, a week long. It just felt like time was going so slowly. And I was just looking at, you know, kind of how are we going to make it through this day? And we had, we had a different set, like our family, our kids are all grown up and they're um, in different parts of the country when it first started. And one of our sons got COVID and he and his girlfriend got it. So being across, you know, the country from him while he was going through it was agonizing. So every day was just um, really long and, and sort of torturous and, and I couldn't get enough information and news about it, you know, so I was sort of feeding on, on all the information that was out there, but it, as, as confusing as it was. Um, but then lately I've found the opposite to be true. Now I don't, I feel like a week goes by um, kind of in a flash. So my sense of time is really messed up. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we were in production on a new project and it had to shut down and we spent a, a while trying to decide, should we keep working? But it was like fiddling while Rome was burning, you know, like you just can't, we just couldn't do it. So it, it was kind of a breakthrough to just let go and say, you know what, this, we're not going to work. We're going to just Stop. kind of experience this moment in all its horror. And, you know, frankly, not working was really nice and kind of knowing that the whole world was stopping. Stop. So yeah. that that was great. I mean, how, how, how about you guys? I mean, having a baby is a surreal experience In and under any so. conditions. But um, <laughs> but how like for Ryan, what was it like in your it, I'm just curious that 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 transition from you know, whatever you were doing to just yeah. a completely different way of life. We have basically been working so relentlessly for the last three years with Captain Marvel and Mrs. America that all I had been thinking about in that time was taking multiple months off, you know? And so it basically was a forced time off and it was great for those first few months. I was like, this is exactly what I was going to be doing anyway. I'm just catching up on movies. I'm relaxing. I mean, I had to cancel a vacation and a, and a move, you know, I was gonna, I was moving to Chicago actually, ended up in March and that got canceled. We're sort of stuck here, my wife and I, but you know, we're in a comfortable place. It's uh, we're, we're healthy. And besides not going out to restaurants and movies, which are some of my favorite things to do, I'm kind of doing what I'd like to do most, which is sit in a dark room, watching movies and, and writing sometimes. And, uh, so, I, yeah. I, it's yeah. almost, there are times where it's, you know, I feel guilty because I'm enjoying the, the quiet and the time to do the things that I want to do that I've wanted to do, like you say, for multiple years. But I, I, it's okay, I guess, to admit it publicly. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, yeah, and to like appreciate, I guess, like part of, I don't know, recognizing that, um, we're in this situation and, and that there's so many people who are going through something that is beyond, you know, what we can imagine from our position. I feel like it, it's important to recognize that um, not everybody has such like a, the ability to like sit back and enjoy exactly. the yeah. that they have, you know, but it's, um, I think it's okay to like embrace it, <laughs> embrace yeah. the time that you do have. Yeah. Um, 
I, you know, he's also staying because he was about to move to Chicago and I had just moved out of LA. He's like staying in my rental house that I had been <laughs> in. He just moved right in. So it just, it does feel, I think, like this bizarre transitional, you know, we were caught in the middle of a transition. And so it's not like we were pushing straight through on something like a production. And I want to hear more about what you were working on. Um, but it, it's not like there was this stop. Right. We were kind of in the middle of this transition, both work wise and in our personal lives. And so it threw us into a little bit of a strange, um, a strange bubble or like just moved us off into a different direction I think creatively too like you can't help but being kind of swung by that yeah I, yeah I, you know it, it's interesting because I know that there's been so much talk about how to make things in the time of COVID and I think that's obviously an important question to ask and hopefully um there are some solutions I haven't really, I mean, no one has really come up with something that makes a whole lot of sense yet. Uh, but I think um, in terms of production, terms of you, production uh, you know, methods, I mean, it's just, I mean, if you're doing, you know, we do commercials uh, sometimes and those seem to have a little more of a chance to make sense given just the, the, rem the, idea the very of remote, focused remote stories directing. that are told. But um but I, I think that, you know, hopefully, speaking optimistically, this immediate stage of the crisis will be different by the end of the year. I think we will. I think, every, you know, from everything we hear, there's, you know, both uh, treatments, if you get it, and, and the, the vaccine seem to be very promising. So I think what's almost a more important question is, what do we make uh, in a post COVID world, like what, what things do people want to see? Um, what do you feel? Like, I think that's the question we are always asking ourselves is like, what, it, what are we going to want to put out there? You know, what is the world going to feel like? And I feel like our, our focus has been so much more on sort of the way the world is changing and or ha wondering how is it really changing and, and how do you gauge that? But it, it does feel like, um, thinking about some of the things we thought about before and even the project we're working on, you know, how has it changed by what we've all been through? And I'm mm -hmm. curious how you guys, um, you know, if you had projects already set for the future, are you rethinking them and are you, um, do they feel different to you? Yeah. You no, it is really interesting. We get sent scripts that were obviously written before this, but they're set in the present and it's like, well, how yeah. can we deal with the present anymore? So the things that we've actually been writing and, and looking at are actually in the past because I have no idea how to move beyond this from, as a, from a storytelling perspective unless it's some sort of uh, future, you know, post-pandemic zombie movie or something. <laughs> I, I, I only understand how to, to, to look backwards from this moment. Yeah. yeah. What is the present day? Like, I, I don't, it is a kind of, I feel like that's every day I wake up trying to figure out, well, so what is the state of the world today? Because it feels like it changes daily um, based on, you know, I, I, it, it's just sort of the news is so shocking and reality is so sort of dramatic right now that it's kind of hard to imagine how do you put drama <laughs> into, you know, how can you compete in a way with um, the, the level of drama that's happening around mm -hmm. us? Exactly, yes. <laughs> sort of, of drama in any any realm you look at is there yeah exactly i have a question non-covid question for you guys oh, oh. And it's going to be annoying because it's the thing that we get asked the most but I'm oh. and <laughs> okay <laughs> how about if we like i'll start the sentence and you guys can finish <laughs> and then we'll just i think you know where it's going yeah maybe maybe it'll feel a little bit different from no. us. people are always asking how do we work as, as a team right and so right. You know, we, we, we need a, a better answer, is what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a better answer. But like, okay, so you get to set, PA hands you the sides if you're working on a movie or a show. 
boom, what happens? What do you, what are you doing? Well, it's funny because I would have to, we'd have to back up a lot from there because um, True. I feel like um, so much about what we do is preparation. And I'm, I'm curious how you guys approach that because um, we, we hate to argue on set. It happens sometimes, but, but part of the goal, I guess, is to make sure that we have like as close to a unified vision as possible going in. So I feel like we probably do more prep in some ways than um, a, a single director would. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and then, and then there's also all of the DGA concerns about what do you do on set? I'm sure you guys have, have, have dealt with that where you can't say, oh, well, I go and talk to the DP and then I talk to the actors or I go into the wardrobe tra trailer and, you, know. you, you You can't say that, that you're doing it simultaneously. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, because the, the idea would, of splitting is, a, is a very big issue for the DGA. And I understand I we're not here to, you know, yeah. dispute that, but, but, you know, so we both do everything. That's one thing we say, you know, and, and depending on who, uh, sort of feels the most connected to a, a response. I mean, we're, we're always kind of huddled together. Um, and then, when the take is done, we'll decide, you know, discuss briefly what what we liked, what we you know what needs attention, and then whoever is sort of the most connected to that thought goes and talks to the actor. And you know, if we've been already engaged with the actor, we tend to keep the same person going to them. But a lot of times, like say on the TV series we did, it was a lot of just like the three of us with Paul, uh, with yeah. Paul Rudd or, you know, or whoever we were working with, but it, it's a lot of times, both of us yeah. there. Um, and, you know, there's, there's just so much, I always think, how does one person do this job? <laughs> because it's just, there's so much to pay attention to. And I mean, that's what I love about it. Cause I think I would be totally bored on, on a set if I wasn't directing, you know, cause I think the fun of it is that there's so much, at any, there's so, you, it's endless how much you can, um, you know, comment on or change. And um, so I never get bored and I, I love that about this work. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know, if, you know, it's, that's, so, that's so a, how, one way of how, answering. How does, <laughs> how does that square with your practice? I mean, that is very strangely, almost word for word, the same kind of thing. <laughs> 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 it's, I so, mean, so that wasn't helpful in terms of <laughs> no <laughs> material here okay. yeah no, but, damn but, but you know since we met you guys and um i i think in the last 12 13 years i feel like there are so many more directing teams and um and in a good way i i don't feel like we get that question as much and mm -hmm. i feel like we don't get it from the people we work with either, which at first, I mean, we started before you guys and, you know, it used to be kind of like, well, which one do I talk to? We got that question once from a, a veteran actor that was um, kind of funny. Um, but, you know, so there, there have, were those issues, I would say more when we started. And um, I think it's nice to see that there are a lot of teams now doing films and doing, you know, all kinds of work and, collaborative like groups that that make films together so I think all that is really exciting and um kind of in some ways breaks down the auteur idea of filmmaking which I don't have anything against that but I think that in some ways teams are not seen there like how do you reckon with the sort of auteur yeah concept? well you know that's that's an interesting question and Something unusual, I wonder if it happens with you guys. So often a misunderstanding will lead to the third idea between us. Oh, <laughs> we're the like, best ones yeah. are, are, just, are misunderstandings. I just misheard what she said. And I was like, oh my God, you like this? And she says, no, that's not what I said, but that's great. <laughs> yes. That wasn't my yeah. idea. It wasn't her idea. I would say that's that, probably that is most really of funny the best ideas. Because that is definitely a huge part of our... <laughs> which which wouldn't happen like you you would never misunderstand yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, hey, no, but maybe maybe <laughs> you talk to yourself enough, I guess. But um, I feel like you know that is one of the things that we love about 
um, collaboration in general, but also just, um, you know, that constant dialogue and then the surprise of sometimes it is just being surprised by something that they say that you actually <laughs> do understand and that is a good idea. But, you know, it's just that, um, that element in a way of the, um, of chaos on some level, it's a little bit of enjoying the kind of chaos of, of two people trying to do something together and it doesn't always it's funny you say that because I've never I've right. never thought of it that way. I always thought it was more calm because there's the strength in two people. Um, and I think that's true in many cases. But there is just a little bit of a mini like vibration that is very alive on the set because we're both having reactions and we have to reconcile those. We have to and you know, it is amazing when well, what I love is the strength in consensus, like when we both have the same response, that's, you know, particularly with a studio executive or certain, you know, uh, forces. forces that you have to reckon with. And, 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 you know, when we are one present one front, I, that's nice. Helpful. Um, do you, I mean, how, how do you, do you guys, you you seem so like such lovely people. How are you in studio? Like I, I, how have you had to fight, and how have you fought? And you know, you mean between the... no, no. I'm sorry, oh, okay. not between the two of you. Yeah. That was a good opportunity for a misinterpretation. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, with with you know outside producers, financiers, studios, I've always been you know. Uh, been the handful of times when. Um, yeah, we've had strong disagreements with somebody who is an executive at a studio or a producer, um, and we've had to fight for something. But I also do think that having to work things out between the two of us often stops there from being too much of too much animus between us and other people, and because we're so used to just yeah. like working something out and right. figuring. Not, not my, my idea or your idea, but what's the best idea? Right. right. Um, yeah. And so I think it, it makes us a little bit more open than, you know, your traditional, like, the directors I read about in books when I was just starting out who, you know, were always in a fight with everybody. Right. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't I tend not to feel that quite as much. A little bit more, maybe on our first movie, because we'd read all those books, we felt like. <laughs> Fighting yeah. was a part, yeah. Yeah. Well, like yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't seek out fights, and often, in a very natural way, one of us will be sort of polarized, and the other one in the room will sort of be the bridge between. And, and so there's, it, it's never, you know, it's, it's always a changing thing, and it's very, it's authentic. I mean, we're not, we don't come in like strategizing our. But, but we've worked, um, we've done all of our films with Fox Searchlight. So, I mean, the first one was, was uh, independently financed and then they bought it. But we have worked with kind of with the same group of people on every cool. film. So there hasn't Which is been great. A, and having those relationships and, you, you know, guys but have, you guys, you guys how, really how, obviously you've moved in very, different circles, including, you know, this very unique Marvel world. How has that been for you? And, and how have you just navigated that? I think we've been very fortunate through all the movies to work with nice people, kind people and good collaborators. And so we've never had a tyrant from above sort of insisting that we do anything a certain way. Uh, it was always a conversation and I can't say we always got our way, but like there was, when there was a disagreement, there was usually a compromise. And I, I think that, um, like Anna said, we, we don't really come in saying it's it's my way or the highway kind of, we don't have that attitude. So I think that disarms anyone who will, uh, who might have that on the other side. And right. we just come up, come into a room looking for the best idea. And uh, often I think, I think we work with people and, and hopefully we find it. Sometimes we don't, I don't know. Sometimes we come out of there with the worst idea and, but it's not like on purpose. Right. <laughs> we just figured it out later. Oh, well, was... when you're going to discover it was the worst idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes... the that, like um, our first, our first uh, few movies, 
we did make with a very intimate, not not the same, you know, distributor um, or the same studio. They were independently financed, um, but the same core group of people, same producers, most of the same crew, and it they were very, um, I don't just intimate familial environments. And that ha did change in the last three years when we worked on Captain Marvel and the Mrs. America. Both of those were the first time that we were, um, you know, not working with that kind of core group of people surrounding us who we considered, um, you know, our collaborators that we grew right. up with. Right, yeah. right. Um, and that does feel different. I, you know, I don't know how, ha have you guys worked with a lot of the same, you know, not just Fox Searchlight, but DP and- yeah, DPs. I AD, mean, same yeah, AD same for AD every film. On everything and, and, you know, we, we work with different DPs on each movie, but they were people we had worked with either in music videos or in commercials and, you know, had an ongoing relationship and, and a kind of a healthy collaboration. But so. a lot of the crew and um, the producer, line producer, um, you know, we worked with uh, that team multiple times and, so, I mean, that does, you know, that is one of the things that right now I think about a lot because I, I miss um, that kind of, that community, you know, I, I really, and, and I feel, um, feel for them because they work, uh, you know, by day by day, kind of, more or less. And, and so, like, just to think that a lot of those people are out of work is really, um, you know, I, I, I feel responsible on some level, like I, I want to. Um, get them back to work, um, but but it is a real luxury to have that. And I I wonder how that, you know. I think Marvel seems like from everything we've heard from Paul, yeah, um, Rudd, he he loves that world. I mean, you know. I mean, they well, they seem to really know what they're doing. They have, I mean, how how, you know, I noticed that you that the DP you worked with on that had done other Marvel movies and they, they do kind of have a look, but how was that being, kind were of you, did you feel that you were dropped into that world? Um, could you, you know, how many of your collaborators could you bring or how, how, how was that? Yeah. yeah. I think in, um, we didn't end up bringing a lot of our collaborators on, um, you know, and there, there were a few people who on like, to be perfectly honest, we would have really liked to bring on, um, right. but for whatever reason it didn't work out. And it wasn't all because they were like, you can't have that person, you know, we, um, in, for, you know, personal and family, other reasons, um, our DP didn't, didn't want to come move to LA for a year to, to shoot the movie or couldn't, right. um, and you know being based in new york and so it and it was um luckily i'm just trying to think a lot of the people who they introduced us to like our visual effects supervisor chris townsend and like ben davis our cinematographer who i would work with again in an instant it was such a joy like these were people who we you know really loved and really clicked with mm. mostly yeah. and, um, <laughs> and really glad to have had and there was never um you know it was there was so much mutual respect um through that process uh of, of making that um of making that movie and these people who had had so much more experience making these kind of big movies and working with visual effects. Um, it was, it was always about like trying to get from us what our vision was so that they could help mm. figure out how to do it. And it was um, how to accomplish it. And I, I think it was a, a, it was an extremely positive experience. It's just that if we do another, you know, small movie, we'll never be able to hire Chris Townsend again. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. He'll never be able to be part of like our core team because he does these huge 
movies, right. you know? Right. How, how was just that, that kind of a schedule and scale of like, how was holding all of that in your heads? And, and I, I'm just curious, cause it, how many days was the shoot? 75. Yeah. Wow. So that's, yeah. And, and how about just the tempo of work? Like, yeah. you know, cause that's one thing I really notice from various, particularly in television where it's like, Oh my God, we've got, seven eight pages to do today and it's all dialogue and well, it's all episode in a week and you know yeah. but uh, how how is that varied from say marvel and then for mrs america how was was that yeah no that's good good question and marvel was a very manageable schedule like we were shooting you know a couple scenes a day it didn't ever felt like it was overstuffed. We had time to do the setups we, we needed. It never felt like, oh man, if we just had more time, we'd get this. We were also shooting 10 hour days. I don't know if you guys have experimented. Oh that. God. We just work through lunch and wow. it's, it, you, it's so much better. Of a, yeah. Of life. Oh, so you, you do work through lunch that way. Yeah, yeah. People are, yeah. are broke throughout the day and they can wow. go, they're not working on the scene. Yeah, they take it when they can. Right, so right. One sit down lunch where it's last man through, um, and and it's really it's rough on the camera crew who doesn't really yeah. ever get a yeah yeah fun. yeah you know, the AD and directors, but I I much prefer it, and I do think it's it's just a better in terms of a lifestyle for the crew, um, people the people who we worked with who had experienced that, even though there tends to be like a lot of union, um, I, I've, I've heard that they're, that the unions don't love it or not everybody wants to work like that, but the people who we worked with who did work like that much prefer it. It's like, yeah. you can go home and have dinner with your family, oh, yeah. be a working parent and not just disappear for three months. The turnaround, um, is the turnaround of, of having to your day get pushed back later and later. Oh. Goes no, on. Goes yeah, it, yeah. It, we, yeah. We experienced that uh, when we were shooting in New York on Living with Yourself, and it was they were not only long days, but of course they they kept pushing. But you and know, I mean, they were New York was almost hard. always fourteen hour days mm -hmm. with an hour commute. I, I mean, it was each way. It was sick, and mm -hmm. and 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 we had the unions coming to our set at different points. Saying you so. just, I mean, yeah. it wasn't our this. choice, but, but it, we just in order to make the schedule, we kept saying, are you sure that the overtime and all the kind of costs involved here are worth it and that we can't just extend, extend the schedule the and work fewer hours? Yeah, I mean, did, did, was television different for you? Not television, but streaming, you know, was, were the hours different on that project? You know, we pushed for the same thing on Mrs. America. It proved to be more challenging, partly, Anna, correct me, maybe fill me in here, but the wigs, we had so many- Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up and wigs that we needed that uh -huh. time in the day to break to get the actor to change for change over for scenes because it was just too long so uh well, funny yeah there were it, it was a few things the pre-calls were so extreme yeah 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 and the makeup um that it i think it just would have been too brutal to work through i for, you know, particular, I don't know. I, I can't remember if it was like a Canadian union thing because we shot that in Toronto, but there were a bunch of different factors. We couldn't do it. They do an hour lunch in Toronto. So it's a 13 hour day minimum. And then with all the pre-calls for hair and makeup to get the actors on their turnaround, we, you know, oh. we were starting like, you know, 5 p.m. by the end of the week and it's, it's really, it's really tough on people. And I think it, it makes it, I think it's a, also can be a barrier to um, like inclusivity in our field in terms of getting more varied, um, you know, diverse crew into yeah. positions as it's, you know, it takes over it's just your limited. Life. Yeah. It takes over your life. And, I don't know. I really do wonder if there's something we can do about that. No, <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's yeah. true. I, you know, I do feel like to the degree that this moment is a reset, you know, it is a good time to say, well, okay, 
What's um, what, what can we do? How can we change this? Um, Cause I, the one thing we also hear, which is kind of horrifying about the very few projects that are shooting is that they move so much more slowly. Hmm. Everything's you like know, they, 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 they 75 tell you, or 50%. Yeah. Get, you're going to get 50% of what you expected the first day. Hmm. And, and, you know, so I don't know. It, 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 I think, you know, we, we didn't have a, I don't, you guys didn't, did you do consecutive um, episodes episodes or on Mrs. America or you did, um, did you block shoot? You did the pilot and then we, we did the first two, which were together. And then, and then um, another director did three and four and five and six. And it was sort of broken up that one. Uh, that, the one thing that I don't think is working super well is when you get, do a whole season you block shoot it like a movie mm. so we did um because we had to because the costs otherwise were you know with certain locations probably but it yeah. just meant that it was two movies at the same time with very little prep with half the time <laughs> so, i mean it was yeah. fun i i you know we loved our crew and every, everyone involved we liked and paul was amazing but but it is but it does beg a question about like can, could this be set up differently. better yeah i mean it's a different animal doing a entire season of something and i i don't know if maybe if you uh i mean maybe scorsese didn't have to do that <laughs> when, <laughs> when he did uh i know a lot of directors who i will not name but who take naps in those hour lunches which yeah. uh, mm-hmm. good napping, strategy napping is- I've, I've tried it a couple times and i gotta say it's napping kind of is, amazing. Napping is great. Yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah, if you can squeeze it in, it's really it's huge. I'm not a big napper, but I I want to introduce that more. <laughs> <laughs> Practice now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time to. Um, but yeah, well, uh, I you know, and then we were also just sort of curious how you guys select projects and what that process is for you. Um, you know, does one of you do you ever like does one of you read something and. Um, feel like oh I really want to make this and then the other one doesn't agree or do you I would imagine you generally gravitate to the same things but I'm curious yeah we've never had that experience where some where I don't think have we ever had something where one of us really wanted to do it and the other one didn't not no not to that extreme sometimes I'll read something and be, be like hey this has something going for it what do you think and then you're like no no, you misread that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, or, or we'll say, no, read it again. You're wrong. You read it again. And then, and then we'll just fight over the thing and we know then that's not the thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How about you guys? We're generally in, in agreement also. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it, I think one challenge is finding things that you have that deep reserve for because it is going to be not just two years of your life. It's going to be, you know, probably a couple years of prep and development. Then you make it and then it follows you around for the rest of your life. So you better love it. You know, I I always say it's like getting a tattoo. You better love it because it's with you forever. (laughs) And wear it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, like we we just read a book that we really like, and we're now just trying to decide: is it something we could actually? You know, we're in that part of the process of what would it mean to to take this right. on, and yeah. um, and and also, you know, like what, what would it mean? How would we make this a film? And then, how can we get someone to pay for it? Because then we suddenly have to become the you know the advocates and you know, it's just. We're not even to the, how would we get someone to pay for it? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you know, when you read something, you also kind of have to figure out how you're going to do it. You know, like, how do we see this and how do we, and um, that takes time. I mean, I, how do you, do you guys, uh, I mean, when you're in, not in the same place, how do you do that? Or how, how does it, and how much time do you usually spend in development and writing? Mm-hmm. I mean, there are two different kinds of things, right? There's something that we're going to write and that's our like idea that we're going to kind of start exploring. And 
by the way, we'll start exploring a lot of ideas that we throw away before we ever even have a first draft or after we have a first draft or whatever. But, and then there's things that, you know, your agent sends you and you read and um, you're trying to kind of insert yourself into it and figure out if you're the best person to make it and if right. you're, you know, you love it if you have that reserve for it. Um, and, and, those, and it tends to be different. And actually, I, I don't know, it, that, that process does, it never kind of talked, I don't think we've ever really talked about this that much. So I don't have like a, a really good sense of how to describe how those two things are different, but it feels really different because I think we only have the energy to follow one of those things that we're writing and starting ourselves. And then for reading, we can read a bunch of stuff and entertain a few things until there's, until we get to the point where we're like really serious about it. And we're not those people who have like eight things going on attached to. And I really admire those people. Like I wish. I know. No, I, 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 we, it's so <laughs> funny. We, we feel exactly that same way. Is you know, I wish I could have a roster of projects, and we have various things that are sort of in the wings. But oh my God, we can We're, really only do one thing at a time in any. It's not even fun to do. I, yes. I don't like that. Um, like juggling. Uh, stuff. I just, I think what is so fun about taking on a project that you love is that you do really go deep into it. And, and, um, and I like to be consumed by that, the thing. So I feel like you just only have, and, 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 and if you have any life outside, <laughs> you yeah, know, there, there's the other, th <laughs> there's, there's that I mean, life thing that happens besides work, but yeah. which sometimes gets, you know, limited, but I see we have a fourth member on our fourth screen up now. Hi. Welcome this back. This has been terrific. Um, I, so I hate, to, hate to break it up. Uh, do you have time for a few questions? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, some questions have been, you've answered already. Um, I actually had a question for you about being a team uh, because most, most filmmaking teams out there are you know, brothers or you know, it's, it's like two men two women, how do you think being a male, female, a team um, kind of brings a sort of fully rounded perspective to your projects? Do you, do you guys want to start? <laughs> uh, sure. I'll just say I'm very lucky. I don't think I would be involved with either of the last two projects if I wasn't working with Anna. So I'm uh, very grateful <laughs> for, for that. Huh. But anything, I don't know. Yeah, what do you, do you have an answer for that? What do you guys say? Oh, um, it is funny. I mean, I think uh, how like gender plays a role in what we do. And um, I, we're actually working on our project um, with this woman, Esther Perel, who's a relationship therapist. It's a documentary series with, uh, with her. And so it's kind of the first time I've thought more about what we each bring. I mean, I did, a, I would say also a little bit more on battle of the sexes because we were really dealing with, um, you know, issues of gender and, and um, women's empowerment. And so I was more aware, but I think because I work with someone who um, is so not uh, a sexist or, you know, chauvinistic and really we have such an e even sort of, uh, we're, we're really well balanced. I don't feel that, um, I don't think about like, I'm contributing this as a woman, you know, here's my, I have to do my part as a woman or I don't know if that's, answering, yeah, I mean, it, I, it, it, it's just not on my mind, but it has been a little bit more as the subject of what we're doing, um, is centered a little bit more around gender. I mean, you, you want to think that as a creative person, you can travel, and explore any subject. Um, you don't need to be a murderer in order to explore murder. But as you talk about gender and some of and life experience, it 
obviously it does really mean something to have lived certain um, experiences and, and faced certain things. So I love, I feel very lucky that we have this, you know, um, range of, of experience that we bring, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it, and it's weird because we are married and have raised a family together. And I think that does impact. Um, but like you say, I think if you work together, you get good at solving problems together. That's one thing that um, I think is really great and why diversity is so important because I think you, you learn so much from working with people who working t- with a variety of people coming from different points of view. I mean, that, that is what I love about film because it's so collaborative. And um, so I, I think everybody brings their own view, but there's so many things that um, are part of that, um, the perspective that you bring, not just your gender, but. That- yeah, good answer. Um, I have a question here from uh, an anonymous uh, question was asking, and you did touch on this a little bit, specifically about giving direction and notes to an actor. Um, do you do it together or is it one person that handles the, the actors? For, yeah, for Anna and I, it, it was a similar answer to what you guys said, which is we, um, based on the relationship, you know, sometimes just in the course of prep, one of us will develop a little bit more of an intimate relationship with an actor and might have, you know, depending on what the note is after a take, when we're doing that little huddle, if, if somebody has a clear idea of what that note is, and assuming we agree on it, that person will go deliver it. What we try to do is stay consistent with that person. So if we're doing take three, four, or five, that we're not like tag teaming, like, nope, that didn't work. My turn. Let me try it. Now, we hey, have, hey, yeah. yeah, like we try to stick with the same voice delivering the note so the actor never feels like well i guess i blew it with that person. <laughs> yeah so yeah now they're no, trying it, to it, it is yeah. really you know it's 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 a dangerous thing to you know it, to kind to, of do to, the... to, to do that either you know good cop bad cop any kind of it just inconsistency and you know but but i think a lot of times things that happen in rehearsal that we're all experiencing we can both go up and talk about stuff and and it's Sometimes it's part of an ongoing dialogue that we've all been having and it's it's very yeah, organic it, it depends on the relationship but i'm sure that's happened with you where you're like with some scenes or some projects we just all three are part of you know we've, we've got an understanding and so it works for both of us to talk with the actor but um, rehearsal really does help so much. I, I, I did want to talk to you guys about that, but another time. Another time, but keep going, Paul. What, what, what else? Know. Please talk about rehearsal. Well, and, like, and also, I would say, and working with actors who love rehearsal and working with actors who don't, and when you have a mix of both, where some need time to warm up and others are knocking out of the park and take one, and you've got to both of those people in a, in a scene. Ah. Work all that. Well, do you guys, I mean, there. there's two kinds of rehearsal, right? So there's the rehearsal that you do on the set where you're kind of working oh. out. And then right. there's the rehearsal you do before in prep. Yeah, I, I was thinking of the prep, the prep rehearsal. Stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and just, you know, we, we don't rehearse scenes in our prep usually, we just, kind of explore the character and the tone relationship relationship. and we try and get a sense of what the actors want and like and and how they respond to certain things um it's much more exploratory but trying to get to the character or and and helps us see how they like to work and and what um, how they're going to work together how they see the character and yeah but the and that prep has become it's been harder and harder to get that kind of prep time. Like we had a, a week on Little Miss Sunshine. And then I think we maybe had a week on Ruby Sparks and Battle of the Sexes. We had meetings, but not like the same kind of, and then we had a couple days of rehearsal, which was really, you know, I, I think because prep time in general on films has sort of shrunk. We've noticed that maybe with lower budget films or, you know, in uh, smaller films, 
that kind of gets pushed aside and um, prep is really just prepping the logistics more. Um, but I don't know. I, if that I feel like one screen. of the, the most important things is, is creating a relationship between two characters so that they don't show up on the first day of filming and go, hi, I'd like you to meet your wife. Here's your husband. <laughs> your and now you've been together years. and you have love <laughs> and you know, you, so in rehearsals, we try and create a little bit of a history so that there's, some spark Something that too. that seems to resonate beyond just the moment of that scene but how, i mean how do you guys yeah no same it's same we're not like the rehearsal isn't okay you say this line here and you move here oftentimes and this is our go-to i don't know how it'll be after covid because i can't imagine bowling again but bowling was our favorite rehearsal <laughs> is he something to do we, we took the cast so of little Miss sunshine bowling there you go see i think and stayed in character they had to stay in character the whole yeah, that's, well that's next level we weren't quite uh, but, but yeah. bowling that's yeah that's great <laughs> it is yeah it's an activity um, it's fun yeah. nelson we did that for half nelson and really a bunch of things since including Captain Captain Marvel. Marvel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do like to read through the script if i yeah. can yeah. yeah that time and then just like any questions that come up you know, make sure that everybody, you know, is making the same movie, right. basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and and that um, gives people an opportunity to ask the questions about the script so that they're not asking them on set. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's it's yeah. really important. And I do remember, like, on Half Nelson, we had a week with, um, our two leads on that movie, just hanging out, reading the script, drinking, let, you know, getting to know each other so that there was a certain kind of, um, and it was so important because Sharika Epps, um, the co-star of that film, you know, had never acted before and had never been in front of a camera except for our tiny little, you know, short film that we made with the two person crew. Um, and it, it was really amazing and it is harder. It is harder to get that prep time now. And you work with a lot of actors who, um, you know, I've worked with actors since then who aren't that comfortable in that space. Um, and, and you kind of pick up on that and, you know, like, uh, like you asked, Paul, um, how do you work with two people, one who loves rehearsal and one who doesn't? Um, you know, I, I think that you, um, it's, a, it's less about like an onset thing for us. We tend to, if you have somebody who loves rehearsal, you have them go second <laughs> when you have the right. cameras on, yeah. you're not going like, to overdo it on set, um, for both of them. But if, if somebody you know, you're actually luckier if you have two people, one who really likes to warm up into a scene and one who just is like sharp and moving right off the bat. The trouble is when you have two people that are good the first you can't cross cover them and they're both best on the first three takes. Um, yeah. So. yeah. That's hard. And how do you you don't know that it oh, always until a little ways into the I think the movie star will always decide that one for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Jonathan. Well, no, I just, when we work with Greg Kinnear, his first takes were always so amazing, and he, he would hate them. He would go, oh, he finished. He goes, I'm so sorry. Like, oh, I don't know what I was doing. Oh, I, I, yeah, I got to do that over. And it'd be like, no, you're welcome to do it again, but we Please. loved that. Yeah. You know, there was just... Yeah. Sheer invention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from Laura, she's sort of piggybacking on you are uh, discussing about uh, selecting and choosing your projects, but she asks, how do you come to these projects? Do they come to you via agents or friends? Do people suggest projects? Do you hunt stuff it's, down it's, specifically? All, for us, it's all of the above. Of you. Sometimes it's, it's an idea that we have that's original and that we just want to pursue and, and do on our own and everybody else can go away. Sometimes an agent sends the script and uh, it's good, or we think about how it, we see it, how it could be better. And, uh, or it's a book, 
Sometimes it's just an article, but uh, yeah. 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 Same for us. It's, and I love that. I love that. Um, I mean, I, I think we don't expect to get scripts handed to us that are ready to go. Um, some, you know, Little Miss Sunshine was pretty much the script that we first read. I mean, we worked a little bit with Michael on it, but for four um, years. <laughs> yeah, four. I mean, <laughs> just to try to get it made. But, but uh, yeah, it, it, I would say it's the same. It's kind of when that that sense of like, oh, this is something that is, you know, I want to spend time with. I want to. And uh, it interests us. It, it it's surprising where those things come from. But a lot of times, through friends, um, actually, people give us something that they think we'll like, or you know. So, but all over. It's variety. fun that it could come from anywhere. That 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 is makes it exciting. Yeah. A uh, question from Will uh, for you, Ryan and Anna, just asking how your partnership formed your filmmaking partnership? I was, uh, <laughs> I, I took a summer class at NYU and um, I met people and Ryan had just graduated from the undergrad program there and we just had people in common. We ended up meeting on a, on a student film and um, kind of struck a friendship there and started watching movies together, then started to help each other with our own projects that we were doing. And we were so, you know, young at the time, I was, I was like 19. And it was just us and a camera. So we just started kind of making short films and doing everything together. And then we just kept working together for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. amazing. I mean, we, Val, yeah, we were no, we but you were nineteen, I was twenty. Yeah, but that's funny that it just sort of you know it's it's not calculated or like it's not you strategic. Know, when you first met, you didn't say we're going to work for the rest of our lives together, but but you've always done projects together, right? Have, yeah, pretty yeah. much. I mean, Half Nelson was the credit is directed by Ryan Fleck, but it it was sort of that time, like you guys alluded to, where there was the Coen Brothers, and that we didn't weren't aware of a lot of other directing teams. Yeah, and so uh, you know, I I directed that one quote unquote, but moving forward, we were like, well, we should really be doing this together, especially in post or in the release of the movie, and we got to see sort of how the director is just treated on a right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. We are pretty much out of time. Uh, my last question for everyone, we would just love to hear your pandemic picks. Uh, everyone wants to know uh, what you're watching and uh, it can be something like a, an old classic, a hidden gem, you could dig deep. Ah, uh, you guys, I bet, I bet. Anna barely has any time to watch anything. But uh. Ryan, before we started, you said you were watching a lot of movies. I'm right? watching so much. I, I would just have a whole list here. But I, besides, you know, living with yourself, which which I binged and loved, of course. Uh, I this is going to sound weird. Like I'm saying this because you guys are on this, but I've been diving into like a lot of '80s music oriented stuff, and I. <laughs> The Decline of Western Civilization. Oh! oh, oh my God. God. You guys, and your names popped up, and this was just like two weeks That's ago. So funny. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. When you think of us, you think heavy metal. Yeah. It's, 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 Headbanging. You know, yeah, we're... <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that, that, that's a, that was a fun experience. But yeah. It, we produced that. That was the only yeah. thing we ever produced. I, uh, I had no idea. And I was like, dude, these guys. <laughs> we, were, we were a year of our lives <laughs> we get on around. the Sunset Strip. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, that's so funny. That's well, I would love to see your list of things that you're watching. I, I feel like we, we haven't. We we started out watching a lot, and it was, it's been a goal of mine to watch The Wire because I never watched it uh, when it was on, and and then I just heard everyone talk about it, but I never had the time, and I didn't want to just watch it a little bit here and a little bit there. So, uh, Jonathan and I and my son watched like the five seasons just do dove in. And that was really the first couple weeks of, of the pandemic. And I, it was really incredible. And seeing it now in, in these times was really interesting. Plus there's a podcast called Way Down in the Hole, 
um, by Jamel Hill, who's a really great um, journalist and, um, and a guy named Val Latham, who I didn't know, but they discuss every episode of The Wire. So I, that's really been interesting because it's current. So they're, they're talking about that in the context of what's going on today. Mm. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Anything, Anna? Um, I do, will admit I've been watching a lot of, um, of movies that I can watch with my five-year-old and because he's kind of just gotten to the age where I can watch movies that I want to watch yeah. with him. I mean, they're not, you know, I'm not exactly watching, you know, the verdict with him, but, you know, <laughs> we, watch, we watch Tom Hanks in Big, uh, we watch um, The Princess Bride, we've we watched all the original Star Wars, and wow. it's been really fun to introduce him to some of the mo those movies that I saw as a kid and really liked. Some were hits, some not as much, but all the ones I just mentioned were enjoyed by all. That's great. You know, the other thing we've been watching is Miyazaki, because I don't know, somehow that was the most kind of therapeutic, those movies, like, our, you know, our kids watched like Totoro and um, Kiki's Delivery Service, but but when those they were movies, kids, but then kids, but, but now they, you know, they are, in their early twenties, they love them even more. And, and the, we watched uh, two documentaries about Miyazaki, which I really recommend. Yeah, they're so beautiful. I mean, it's just I don't know. It, there's something about his love of the natural world, and then but the the kind of his process, mix of darkness, his dedication. And, and, it's yeah, I. It's really, that was the most therapeutic thing we've watched, I would say. Where did the two documentaries play? One's, one, uh, They're both streaming the, and... Yeah, the, the uh, Kingdom of Dreams and Madness, I think is on Amazon. And then uh, Never Ending Man, I think we had to get off YouTube. Okay. But they're both great. One of our guests a couple of weeks ago, Ryan, was uh, Josh Olson, who's recommending a, a ton of like crazy 80s movies, uh, including The Apple. Have you ever seen The Apple? Oh, yeah. Oh. That's yeah. very crazy. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, it, was, <laughs> it is wild. Have you seen that, John O'Val? No, no. no. I'll, we'll check it out. The so Apple, it's on uh, Prime. It. It's, uh, it's made by one of the, the, two, uh, the two guys that ran... Canon films in the eighties. Oh yeah, wow. sure. Yeah, and it, it posits a world uh, where like one company kind of owns everything. It's sort of <laughs> weirdly, and it's, it's wow. on Amazon Prime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it is nuts. Yes, wow. it is totally nuts. That's interesting. Well, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, I hope you, you know, continue to be creative during this lockdown and join us when everything is back to normal and share your next projects with us. But um, until then, Jonathan Dayton, Valerie Ferris, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you, Paul. And really great to see you guys and um, hear you uh, just confirm a lot of the things that we <laughs> yes. have uh, felt about. Teams. The process, yes. Yeah. Thank, thank and then, yes, Anna Bowden in... Uh, uh, Hudson Valley. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. And Ryan Fleck. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.